Welcome to Dare to Dream, award-winning podcast. I've been doing this show for 13 amazing years this June, and how fortunate am I to have come across this? I was just talking to somebody in the music business today, and it's always really interesting for me to experience my roots when I share with somebody. Like I'm always moved when somebody's in the music business because that was my life. For so long. I come from a lineage in my family, who's who in international music composers, Grammy winners, and so forth. And I was a singer, a professional singer and actress for most of my life, but that hasn't been my reality for a long time. This has been my reality. So what I do is this show. What I do is master level conversations with people like I'm going to bring on today. And what I do is I offer to you how to write your book, how to get your book taken to a guaranteed international bestseller, and how you can be interviewed on radio and podcasts with great results. So that said, I was having a conversation with somebody today, and I thought it was worth repeating. This is something I really want to go back and, and watch myself. Apparently, Brene Brown was on 60 Minutes, and he'd never seen her before, right? So it's really great when someone new gets introdu introduced to Brene Brown, and uh, you know, apparently she was talking about all the things she talks about and we know about. And so interesting, uh, the interviewer had asked her, and of course this is hearsay, what my friend told me, but the interviewer had asked Brene Brown, oh, I see you've written this many books and I understand your books are self-help. And she said, I really don't prefer that word. I really prefer the idea that we help each other. And my friend, he's a man, he started getting really choked up when he was saying this. And I was, I it just, I was really appreciating his emotion around it because I, I'm feeling the same. I'm watching people come together and help in ways that are really important. And I had a neighbor who stopped by and knows I have absolutely no wipes today. And she went out of her way to somebody else's house who picks up lots of things like that and gave me half. So I'm set. And I have somebody else who ran and got me a painter's mask at a time when all the things I ordered like that, that all the, the packages literally got shut down in transit because all the hospitals are needing them. So they're reappropriating. So I didn't do anything. This was, you know, the angel's hands taking care of me. I'm super grateful and I'm super receiving. Aside from Brene Brown saying something so beautiful, and I hope you're one of those receiving, giving at the same time, and I think it's a really important time how we show up, showing up. I also think it's really interesting that, you know, my friend was saying, the one who's got all choked up about how spiritual this time feels and how interesting, and it seems a very interesting person to be noticing things like that. And I said, yeah, I think it's like God said, I'm shutting it down, man. I've been trying to get your attention and I'm, and you're not, you know, you're killing each other. You're killing the planet. You're killing your animals. You're over consuming and it's exhausting. And I want you to stop. And I've been asking you to connect with me for like a really long time. And here I am. And what more powerful way than to shut us all in inside our homes and say, okay, deal. Okay, deal. And I also want to be very, um, empathetic and compassionate right now because it is said that none of us are going to go unscathed through this time that we're all going to know somebody i already do i already know somebody who died in new york uh the story is so horrible it's so horrible his widow who had to go she's infected too but not like him left her apartment to claim his body at the hospital and had to be sent back to her uh apartment to be quarantined for the next week so she's grieving all alone it's unthinkable so send her love as i say this you know her name is jan and she lives in new york and just send her love that's all all everything's energy and i know somebody else who um got tested two people and i i know because of their circumstances they are probably infected and so it's going to keep going so it's really important this time how we show up and i don't mean this out of fear I mean it really like who we are, who we really are, our oversoul being. This is more important than ever, ever, ever before. So, okay. I'm going to start our show. So those of you who are interested, 
Um, and this is saying I'm no longer alive. Boy, this is a this is a pain in the kahuna here. Um, hmm. All right. If I have to start again, I have to start again. And but somebody else says I see you. So if you can keep uh, typing, that would be great. It looks like it's moving, so I'm going to assume something's happening here, unless I hear otherwise. Um, doing my best with this very interesting interesting equipment right now. So we are on radio, on podcast, also on social media live all at the same time. And what a glorious time to be doing all of the above. So if you don't mind, great. Thank you, Jennifer, for letting us know we are seen. Yay. So today's show with Debbie Dashing or Dare to Dream on the podcast, I'm going to be featuring the business intuitive and the medical intuitive, my friend and colleague, Sherry Anshar. I'm so excited to introduce you to her. She's going to be taking your questions. We're also going to be having conversations, so chat below. I also ask you to su subscribe to all of the Dare to Dream shows for these conversations. YouTube.com slash Debbie Dashinger, and please leave a review. We're also on Apple, Apple Podcasts, as well as 40 different syndicated outlets. So we can really be found anywhere you like, Spotify, Pandora, iHeartRadio, BBS Radio, and more, 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 Spreaker. Also, interested in writing a book or taking your book to bestseller or being coached on how to be exquisite on radio and podcasts and get booked today for your interviews. What a great time to be doing all of the above. Media visibility could never be easier because it's all done from your home, right? Go to debbie-inger.com, just spell my name correctly and you'll get in D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R. Question, do you feel like you're going through struggle or is there smooth sailing? Is failure following you or success? Relationships, work, are you in flow? And are you playing small? An interesting question, are you battling with yourself or your paradigm to be understood, to be seen, to be valued, to be heard? This is why we've got Sherry Anshara on the show. And I wanna thank in advance Dr. Sherry who wrote in one of our listeners wrote in, Debbie is an influencer in her field. Her interviews with spirit-based leaders are full of powerful wisdom. Hearing their insights on life, contentment, happiness, and powerful processes provide valuable real-world instruction that you can apply immediately and see change. Thanks, Debbie, for the Dare to Dream podcast. Thank you, Dr. Sherry, different Sherry, by the way. So again, Dare to Dream, Debbie Dashinger, show's been nominated for Two People's Choice Podcast Awards, subscribe to the show. Our rankings are very high in self-improvement in all of the USA on Apple Podcasts, as well as in several other countries, and we thank you so much for getting us there. This show is sponsored by Dr. Dane Keir, H-E-E-R, and Access Consciousness.com. So if you'd like to become a facilitator or take a class or read a book, they're all online. Do you want to heal today at the cellular level? Well, my guest, medical business intuitive Sherry Anshara, is an international bestselling author, professional speaker, former radio host of Conscious Healing, and contributing writer to national and international publications about the Anshara method of accelerated healing and abundance and wellness. Sherry utilizes her experience and expertise as a medical intuitive for the groundbreaking work she does with cellular memory. She can help you rid yourself of unwanted limitations, restrictions, negative thought patterns, and toxic behaviors at the cellular level. To learn more about her, sherryanshara.com. And I welcome Sherry Anshara to the Dare to Dream show. Sherry, welcome. So great to have you. Thank you. I am so delighted, thrilled, and honored to be here. Yeah, this is so great. Finally, finally. So we just were talking in your bio about Anshara Method gets rid of old traumas, limitations, negative thoughts. I cannot think of a better time to have you here talking about this. So cellular waves are what we're referring to. How does that work? How does how do you access what's happening in somebody? And then how do you rearrange that so it's a healthy wave instead? 
Well, your body is the intelligence and intellect. Your brain, they keep searching for intelligence and brains. It's not going to happen. And plus, we're only utilizing half the brain as a computer. But the body stores all of this fabulous cellular memory. But it gets memorized over by belief systems like you're not good enough, Debbie, or you're not smart enough, or you can't do this, or, you know, program, 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 which I call duality. But the cellular memory, it's as simple as that. If you cut yourself, whether you put an antibiotic or not, the body knows how to heal itself, correct? You don't have to sit around and wait. It just begins right away. So in this method that I created, all emotions, all emotions are the foundation of every issue in your tissues. Because <laughs> emotional, mental, physical, spiritual, financial, those five words mean the same thing. Is it your clear consciousness? Or is it based on a belief system in one of those paradigms within you that says you can't do it, or you don't have the intelligence, or you don't have the where for all, or you didn't come from the right family, or you didn't come from the right place. So all of that, that is memorization. But your body can access the core of the trauma within 10 minutes or less. So core of trauma. And the dramas. And the dramas and the mamas. <laughs> so what is that like for you? What is it that you see? That's what I'm curious about. What is it like to be you while this is happening? Well, actually, I'm very grateful because as an intuitive medical, you know what? Intuition is so simple. It just means our natural innate ability to discern. That's all it means. You know, like trust your gut. So are we discerning that, you know, this is working for us or not? And that's based on feeling, feeling, not thinky, thinky, because how many times do we talk ourselves out of self? So as a medical intuitive, I, and as, even as a business intuitive, I have the ability to look into that person or that business and see where their, um, their structure got goofed up. I, I'll give you an example. I had a lady come to me and she had these tre tremendous headaches. Remember, trauma drama. And I said, you have the starting of a tumor and it is non-cancerous. It's in your right brain that goes to the female side. So some, your left brain, I mean, your right brain goes to female left side. So I said, somewhere you're being restricted. And then I met her husband. I'm not blaming her husband, but he was a control freak. And actually in two of the sessions, I had to throw him out. And so it, so it took about four months before the technology picked it up. Mm. And guess what? It was a tumor in her right brain. And when she began to realize with the realize that she was, holding herself back now we're not blaming him because how you're treated is how we give people permission to treat us mm -hmm. and so we were able to resolve that did she have surgery that's what she opted for and it didn't do any damage but that is how she processed her anger her frustration and being controlled somebody could create cancer which is eating yourself up alive or somebody can create an addiction and by the way, addictions at the very emotional core of addictions is desperation for attention. Explain that one. Why is it desperation yeah. for attention? So when there is an addict in the family, it doesn't matter what kind of addict it is. Who gets all the attention? That's so ah. true. That is so true. There's, well, because I have been in a relationship with an addict before, and I know what that's like. And there is a yeah. definite narcissism to that where yeah, they control all the attention. And then the disabling enabler actually then goes into a victim program of all I've done for you. And then you keep doing it. And all that does is make the energy, which is physical, explode. Mm. Because mm. energy then is actually a byproduct. It's either a byproduct of being conscious and healthy, or it's a byproduct of all these belief systems that I call duality, the BS programs. And so that is what happens. But at the emotional core of every addiction has to do with desperation for attention. Hmm. Wow. Isn't that powerful? And that's a wave then that people, this is healable, right? I mean, besides going to 
AA or another 12-step program, but this is doable. This is something that you can help to assuage so that people can actually heal from the addiction. Well, actually, the need for the attention is the real problem, and whatever's underneath that, is that what you access? Absolutely, and when it started, when it started. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you an example, I had a new client that was the number one kid for seven years in the family. And then the second kid came along. So she had it all going on till she was seven. And then this kid came up who happened to be the boy, the son, the God, whatever. I'm, I'm, I'm kidding, but it wasn't that way. And then she had to start doing some kind of behavior to get everyone's attention. And that actually set up the firestorm, that wave, that particle wave based on addiction and would do anything. And then what that would happen in her relationships with men. Now, this is not righting or wronging it, but that is really that recycle bin of duality, that sideways figure eight of infinity. It's just an infinity of, oops, I did it again. Oops, I did it again. And oops, I did it again. <laughs> That sounds like a song so, I know. <laughs> I know. It sounds like a song I know, too. We all do. And so when you get to the core of the information, and fear is only lack of information. It's one of my cores. And one of the first steps I teach is Neo, non-emotional observer. Mm -hmm. So when you begin to observe yourself, it's not like, geez, I was stupid or I was wrong. You know, you were a kid. And your brain's not developed till we're 25 or 26. So... It, we, we do the best we can with what we have. And so when you're able to get to that place, oh my God, I've had people help people off a of crystal meth. I assisted them really to get it, it, sex addiction. I said, you know, it's okay that you have sex, but if you're not having any fun at it, then it's no fun. <laughs> I wondered about it's, that one. I wondered what was the downside to that one? <laughs> not, not making having a connection. Mm. because then it becomes wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, but there's no thank yous for it. So mm. then it makes a difference. I mean, two of my clients wrote in a, a book I wrote, um, it's called The Intelligence Code, and but there's two chapters in there called Quantum Sex, Quantum Relationships, of how I taught them to connect. And these are CEOs of their own companies. They're very successful and very nationally known. But what a difference it made for them in this relationship. So mm -hmm. all the baggage that they bagged in an age, wordology is your biology, that they were able to dump it instead of keep hanging on and hanging on and repeating, and their conversations changed. Mm -hmm. So I always say when it gets into those, the towel should say his, hers, and next. <laughs> okay. So Here's a question. We are in the pandemic. I brought up some of that in the beginning with Brene Brown and saying, you know, it's time to become a community. Some of my points of view about, you know, it's a wink, wink, nudge, nudge about God, God is shutting down the, you know, the planet right now to say, hey, this is not going well. This is not going right. This is not going where it's supposed to go. And yet, uh, whatever this Here's is. The question. We are in the pandemic. I brought up some of that in the beginning. Ah, this is so hilarious. This live is really like actually um, on crack, to be honest. But um, I'm going to keep the sound off and see if I can keep working on this because the live is going a little bit uh, bananas here. But it says we're live. I'm going to just trust. It may be that it's not a great connection. And I have to just trust whatever this is, whether I just end up talking to Sherry or we end up going deeper um with other people i hope we i really hope we can because i know she's showing up for you and uh and cool so we also have a question so let's deal with the pandemic sherry i apologize for that no, um no. do people have to get sick is there a worry to get sick uh, uh, what is your contention in all of this what is fated not fated and how would you respond to the concerns and the perception of the virus at this time? Okay, uh, so I'll, I'll give it like a bigger picture and then we'll narrow it in, okay? Sure. So as a bigger picture, I look at this as sort of the in-between times. We're going from the old world 
to the new world. You know, we're going across the ocean. We're either on the Nina, the Pinta, the Santa Maria, or some boat, whatever. And some of us will fall off because we will hold on to these uh, debilitating belief systems. The joy of it, and I've been talking about it in these in-between times, that we are now cocooned in our homes, wh whatever that is. So to me, that is the metaphor, but also the physicality of to begin to connect to our own self. So part of our issue is based on worth and value, that we're not worthy enough or we don't have value. But when we begin to connect to ourselves, as you call the source, God, that we connect to that heart, which is the most expanded resonance in our body. Not because I say so, because actually science has, you know, resonated. And the brain is like this little pea brain up here, and we're only using half of it. So this is an opportunity to go inside and make connections to our own self first. In this past week, I've talked to somebody I've known since the third grade. Another person since I've known since the 12th grade. I have friends that are calling me and sometimes I will call them and if they don't answer, you know one of the things I say? You don't have to call me back. I just would like to hear your voice. Mm. I just would. And they call me back and they said, you know what? It made a difference for them. So that is a connection because we do, you know, Facebook and all this stuff, but that is a real connection hearing the voice. And then we have the opportunity to go inside and start asking ourselves, and I've got clients and myself writing it down, what is really the worth of my life? What is really the value of my life and these connections and these people in my life? Does that make sense, Debbie? You know, yes. Very much so, because that's actually my experience. Everything from people and connection and how people are showing up. I've always been someone who's, I, I have a sense of how finite life can be. And so I've always been someone who expresses to people. You know, if I love you, I have had, as you know, a recent breakup with somebody and I'm really contending with I think I need to complete with this person. I really do. I need to like have everything said. And this is the most amazing time to do that. Yes. Um, and I understand as far as people we knew, but it even feels like it's extending out to people we haven't known that well, how we're showing up. Is yes. That I actually had a gal call me on Sunday that saw some of my postings and she lives here in Scottsdale. And we talked and she said, I have to meet you. She said, you have been inspiring me because mm -hmm. I don't know. Where I can... She said, because of the way that you're explaining this. Mm -hmm. And so in making these connections, look what your neighbor did for you. Because, but this is the change. So we've been taught to do, and I'm going to change this, that we've been taught to do something to or for someone, or they do it to or for us. But in this paradigm shift, we can start doing it with each other. Mm, which is so wonderful. It's so it wonderful. Is. We've all been so separated. We've been separated from God's source universe. We've been separated from each other. We've been separated from ourselves. Yes. And that is the point of it is that we don't have to do this separation anymore that in that connection. Mm. And we have been taught to be fearful of ourselves. We've been taught to be uh, afraid of our own power. I mean, I wrote a book. I wrote a plug here called Take Back Your Power, You Becoming You. It's really a, a manual on how to do it. Because I love sharing with people that if you do this, this will happen. If you don't, it won't happen. It's okay. But we've been taught to self-judge ourselves, that you know that we, we don't have the, the good enough, whatever it is. So this to me is a time to connect with people. Oh. And I'll give you I love that. I have, I have something to add there. I also, when I'm listening to your list, besides judgment and criticize and sabotage, we also sacrifice ourselves, right? Yeah. There's a lot of us out there who have learned for whatever wound we grew up with. Oh, I think I just show up here and keep giving and enabling and giving and giving until I'm empty. And then I'm going to resent the F out of you. Right. And I think it's really interesting. Also paradigm shift, no more sacrifice. It's doing a with, it's not codependence or independence it's interdependence yes and cubby coined that years ago so that's why i love it and i teach wordology is your biology so i love that withness now I'll give you an example i was at the bank 
this is what you have to do. And you, you can't go in, you have to do the drive through. And it was like 30 minutes. So while I was in that line, when I got up, there are three people and you could tell they were like exhausted, you know, because people were crabby and all. So I got up and I said, you know what? Just thank you so much for being here. You guys are on the front mm -hmm. line. You should have seen their faces light up and thanked me profusely. That is what we've got to begin to do is use our language, whatever it is, in a more productive way to have those with connections yeah. but it has to come from the heart it's the only place to start because all that matters which is physical matter is what matters from the heart Love and, it. So, thanks. and so to me these are opportunities to make connections even the stuff that i've been posting on facebook because i understand about energy and energy is physical I've cleared properties and, you know, homes and buildings all over this country, either there or whatever. But when it's, when we are spewing from our bodies into a room, I'm stuck. I hate, why do I have to run, run? That energy, which is thick, snotty, gelatinous, goopy, sticky, icky, is actually embedded in your walls. It's embedded in your furniture. You know, and I'm still seeing clients and they're very safe. And a couple of them said, I love coming here because I feel safe and I feel secure or even when we're working on the phone. But the point of it is what I'm sending out to them is just support and listening. And this is another opportunity that we stop hearing, hearing through these computer brain ears, because when we do that, we filter from our programming in the past. But when you okay. begin to listen. Let's take this deeper, Sherry, because we have people writing in who want to interact with you. Yes. And I am thank you guys for sending your questions. I'm so happy that you're doing it because what an auspicious time to connect with somebody like this. And, and P.S., I'm just saying, as a metaphysician, don't you know, that this is another reason spiritually I'm very clear this is happening because people like Sherry and other magnificent, brilliantly gifted people that I hang with on a regular basis, guess what? <laughs> no more being buried under middle America or question. Now is the time more than ever that people are turning to them because, you know, as light workers, we're here. It's finally our time. So, Sherry, here's the first question. This is from Amy. I'm just going to give the first name. Amy says, my question is, Sherry, is my hip pain related to something blocking my forward movement in my life's work and financial growth? And I'll add to that or otherwise. That's Amy's question. Absolutely. And I'd like her to tell me which hip. Is it left or right? And then we'll go in a deeper dive. Okay. Amy, I'm going to need you to write. And I'll, I'll I'll do the general of it, okay? I'll do the general of it. The hips are actually in the old seven chakra system, because I teach 13, is the creative chakra. And it's how we create. The female side creates and the male side manifests, manufacturing, manipulates. It's not gender. <laughs> and so when we have hip issues, that's our creative chakra. But if you look at the first chakra, that's the pubic bone and the tailbone. When we're holding on to belief systems that says you can't do this or you're, you're not qualified, whatever qualification is, you can't do that, that energy, now the movement, you talked about the movement, will move up to the second chakra and we will get shut down. That's why people are able to create something but they're not able to manifest it or actualize it in cool. the world. And Amy writes because in, it is the right hip that is giving her and that, and that is the manifesting side. Somewhere she's blocked in there. And see, I work in the unconscious. The subconscious is the, uh, your body's like a house. So the subconscious would be like your attic, your garage, your, your, your closet. You know you have to clean it out and it's there. But where I work is in the unconscious how it got programmed. So that right hip has to do in the creative process of not being able to take the step into manifesting it. And then the next step is to actualize it. 
How can there she get through this? How can she assuage this pain, this blockage, if you will, for her life's work, for her finances, and make it a, uh, an easy way for her to move forward instead? What would have to happen? Okay, then she'd have to recognize when it starts. Now, I don't know, I just know her name, but what's intuited to me is this really began at seven years old for her, second grade. So it could be someone in her family that was an authority figure that said, you know, you know, like the boy can do it, but you can't do it. Now, this is what I'm intuiting. And usually it happens. So when you, and this isn't without judgment. And, and so there is a fear. So this is what fear does, lack of information. That's all fear is. It's not false evidence appearing real. But in that fear, we will validate the invalidation of ourselves to validate the authority figure outside of us that said you can't do it, so we will validate them. And so I'll give you an example. I work with this client and her dad grew, was going, he, for 30 years, he hated his job. He hated his job. And he would tell everybody, I hate my job. And he would tell her, don't do it. Well, she ended up working for a company in, a, in an area for 35 years and hated it. And when we got to the core, she was actually validating her dad by invalidating herself. And when she figured that out, she was out of that job like this, like this, completely out of it, and began to develop a different relationship with her father. Hmm. And this was all going on unconscious. And that's what we've been taught to do. I have a saying, I am the only one that can validate me. And for those outside of me who validate me, I thank them, whoever they are, doesn't matter. And for those that don't, oh, well. <laughs> oh, well. So that's what's going on. Self-sustaining and self-validation. Well, um, I'm hoping, Amy, that that helped. And um, you know, if you pick up anything else for her, we'll go back to that. Uh, I'm going to take a very quick break here. We'll be back in just a minute. We have other questions for Sherry. This is Debbie Dashinger on Dare to Dream. And if you would like to write a chapter in an anthology book, I'm producing a book called Dogs Are Paradise. It's positively fantastic. Go to debbied.net slash anthology. It's D-E-B-B-I-D dot net slash anthology. You can be a published author and not have to write an entire book. I am having everything done for the authors, the editing, the formatting, the book cover, the launch to international bestseller, the publishing, the print book, and the ebook. How does it get any better than that? So if you have a story to tell about a dog, canine, vet, service dog, you've been a dog, <laughs> whatever the story is, uh, we, we vet each other and I make sure you're a great fit for the project. Go to debbied.net because if you have a tail or a tail to tell, we'd love to have you aboard. And uh, Amy says, thank you. Awesome. Great to hear. If you're just tuned in, tuned in, it's so funny how my mouth is so much faster than my brain or vice versa. So I'm trying to catch and sync everything up. This is Debbie Dashinger, Dare to Dream, award-winning podcast. Great to have you. I'm speaking with Sherry Anshara. She developed the quantum pathic energy method. She's a medical intuitive and gets to the core of your issues, but she also can help you as a business intuitive or a solution. You can find out more about her at sherryanshara.com. And I wanna go back up to the next question that we have. And thanks for joining it, folks. If she's saying something that's helping and she's addressing your question, just type in below. I'm doing my best gorilla job here to keep with Sherry. Well, I've been doing this a long time, so it's not that hard for me, but with Sherry, but also with you at the same time. So we've got a question right now, Sherry. The name is Siddiqui. I'm gonna spell it for you in case it makes an energetic difference for someone who does words. It's S as in Sam, I-D-D-I-Q-I, Siddiqui. Siddiqui Ray says, my question is, my migraines, what else can I do to treat them? What is the underlying cause? Thank you. Okay, and migraines, if you look at the word, it's migraine, the irritation. Migraines start in that first chakra of the pubic bone and the tailbone. 
So what I'm feeling about your migraine is when you get overstressed and energy is physical. It's physical. It's thick, snotty, gelatinous, goopy, sticky, icky. But that you are holding on in that migraine of you. And actually, I feel that this started in the womb with you. That, that you are missing something. That you did not have the full potential to create your life the way you do it. And so that is like, a head butt. You know what I mean? Mm. So this is the crown and this is the base chakra. And so I was at a luncheon once and they said in, in nine seconds, tell us what you do. And I said, well, I assist people to take their head out of their assets that aren't working. <laughs> and so that is what I see is the migraine. And I feel that you are like your, your shoulders are real heavy of taking on responsibility. If someone's happy, it's your fault. Uh, Sadiku, or if someone, or if they're miserable or happy, it's your fault. You cannot be responsible for them. It's called responsible. So it's being responsive. And so you've taken on too much. That physical energy bottles up. It comes all the way up your spinal column, hits your shoulders, and it goes into your head and it swells. The physical molecules of emotions are thick, snotty, gelatinous, scoopy, sticky. So they get embedded in your brain cells, which are fat cells that hold toxins. And then it swells up against the cranium and then pushes on your, um, on all the tissue around your head, the scalp. And that is the basis of this physical, emotional um, issue in your first chakra. That's your migraines. And it doesn't matter how much drugs you take, it's not going to get to the core of this that I feel started in the womb with you, with your parents not judging them. That's with, pretty was that That's with your parents, period? I'm not judging them, period? Yeah, because you, you can't. But it could be the dynamics of, the, of their belief systems, the BS. And I feel that this person is fighting against themselves. Like, you know, people say, I'm hitting my head against the wall. I keep hitting my, I stop, it feels good, but then I hit myself again. And that is metaphorically, but that's what I feel, that you are just hitting your head against a cement block wall. Well, the next part of her question, Sherry, is uh, what else can I do to treat them? This is somebody who does um, long meditation and has a spiritual practice and has tried different uh, doctor type methodology methodologies and and anyway still plagued with these migraines what can she do forget about treating them i'm going to take that question deeper what can she do to resolve this okay in order to have a solution you have to have a resolution and because of the wonderful you know work or facilitation that she does again she's taking on responsibility if someone gets better it's her fault if they don't it's her fault mm -hmm. she is even though you meditate it's wonderful but you're still not getting to the core issues of this. This is very much a self-judgment, becoming Neo, non-emotional observer, and beginning to observe what is my behavior. You cannot be responsible for someone. You can't make anybody happy or miserable. You can support them in either one or not. So it's being responsive, but you've got to be, respond to yourself first. And that's why it's a recycle bin. That size weights figure eight of infinity. Oops, I did it again and then again. And then we have a respite. The respite is when it stops. And then we go back into that recycle bin of all of this self-judgment of hers. That she's competing with herself. Mm. Okay. I hope that was helpful, Siddiqui. Thank you for your question. That's awesome. I'm going to ask a generic question for people, um, Sherry. Mm -hmm. Let's see, what do I want to like tap into? Yeah, what the heck? Why do people sabotage themselves? This is a great time for people to like look at the man in the mirror, look at the woo man in the mirror. Why do we sabotage ourselves? What is going on there that would even make us want to do that even unconsciously? Because when we sabotage, we're actually validating the invalidation of ourselves. We are giving our power. See, we've been taught, we, we've mixed it up on this planet. Force is left brain, right, like force. I'm going to force you to do this. I'm going to force you. But that's not power. 
So when people do that, they're actually giving their power away and they're attempting to convince somebody else and no one can be convinced. So then it is a recycle of that sabotage. Okay, uh, this, how about this is going so great. Now this is unconscious and sometimes subconscious. This relationship, this experience, this business, whatever it is, is going so, so great. But, but head, the first chakra of duality, <laughs> when is the axe going to fall? And then we create the axe. It's called sabotage. And then we are in, here, here it goes again, here it comes. Or I thought that person was somebody else. So one of the things that I teach also is profiles behaviors, and roles. We have to know our own profile so we don't attract in the law of distraction an experience, a business, a person to re-sabotage ourselves over and over and over again. Can you and explain so that? Because that I feel like I like that the what you're saying because it feels like um, an FBI profile, which I always found very interesting. I'd like to be profiled. <laughs> I should have been a profile. That's what my friends said that are in the law enforcement. What is that? What is a profile? How do we profile ourselves? How do we, like, I feel like I'm intimate with myself. I, I think I am, but like, what does that even mean? Okay, so I take people out of thinking and the feeling. So here, there's a famous actress out there. I'm not going to name her, what her name but her is. Initials but, are. She, but her initials are E.T. <laughs> <laughs> and she was married to the same man Elizabeth times. Taylor. Yeah, they were all alcoholic abusers, all of them. It didn't matter what they did, you know, and Richard got us, you know, twice. My favorite husband of hers was Larry Fortinsky. She, <laughs> she met him at Betty Ford. It only cost her five million bucks. That wasn't even enough for one of her settings, got it? But four of her besties mm -hmm. were gay. And they were all drug addicts, alcoholics. If you look back in their life, what even killed themselves from it? Mm -hmm. And so then her son, from what I understand in research, married a billionaire granddaughter and, and she overdosed. So that is a profile. We recognize the behavior. I, I'm, I use myself a lot of times as an example. I married a man that was my mom. He was so wanty needy. And like my mom, she was wonderful, but she was fabulous wanty needy. Oh my God, I can't say wanty needy. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I thought I was getting my brothers. This is not incestuous, but they were a lot older than me and they were very dynamic businessmen and entrepreneurs. This man was brilliant and their age and he had not one entrepreneurial cell in his entire body. So I became the husband, I became the entrepreneur. So I knew that behavior of my mother, that you know I was always trying and trying, but just trying in her wanting needy to fix her. That's the fixer. So that's a role. And so I don't do wanting needy anymore. And it changes the vocabulary. I don't want or need anything, but it's what I require, which is action and desire and deserve. Because deserve means to serve yourself first when the plane's going down, take the oxygen. But when we're in that wanting needy, that's a profile behavior and role. And if you start looking at some of the people in your life, this isn't judging. Why do, not why do I love them? Why do I like them? And, and that's as deeper. Like is much deeper than love. And why don't I like them? So there's actually a gal that lives here in the Valley. Debbie, she drives me crazy. I do not like this woman at all in the like mode. But every time I see her, I go, she is such a blessing. Because mm -hmm. I know that something in her is triggering me and it's all about me, not her. And so every time I see her, I'm like so thrilled to see her. Now, doesn't that make more? Because I know that she is a profile that's got to be stuck in me somewhere. Mm -hmm. Now when I see her, I'm just happy. I don't, I don't have that. But before I had a reaction, act one, scene two. But now I have a response. So Sherry, so you've good. profiled yourself, right? And you realized, okay, I'm the guys I'm ending up with not working for me. I'm marrying mom with a penis. That's great. <laughs> but I've already done wanty needy. So you're just you you go to desire, which is serving yourself first. You so you have all these you no know, beautiful words, but I'm wondering what is the bridge that got you there? Mm -hmm. I mean, is it just oh, a language? Not, 
yes, languaging, recognizing my own behavioral patterns by becoming Neil. That's quantum physics in action. You know, you plant a seed, you just put it in the ground and you watch it and some green sprout will come up. It can be a tree, it can be anything. It can be a tomato plant. But no, Neil. No. It's Sorry, observing. go ahead. No, it's just observing and not getting emotional. The non-emotional, because when we get emotional, we're stuck in the past. You and know what? You just said something, I gotta stop there. That was so big and I really needed to hear that. So I just wanna reiterate what you said was the non-attachment because that was, that was what I'm after here is let the why. You know, I am a major mofo manifester, major. But I also have this column here where like it's more efforting, right? Not as much manifester. And so I've always wondered like, what? Like, I live in this realm where a lot of people sit back and go, how are you doing that? It's like, rah, rah, right, Scooby-Doo. But you just told me something. So it happened again today. And I shared with you before we got on, I have some place to go. I'm gonna tell you right now, my best friend is pissed off at me that I'm going. She gave me such a hard time. I had to freaking meditate because she had her, I was feeling her anxiety as an, as an impasse about me going where I'm going at a time like this, but I'm clear. I'm going with God and the angels. I know what I'm doing and I'm doing a lot of due diligence, diligence. However, I also know I need to protect myself. Couldn't find a face mask. They're completely sold out. They've all been diverted to the hospitals. Cannot find disinfectant, same. I could go on with the list, but then this takes it to another level. But I couldn't buy into her fear. I am clear, <laughs> when, right? When my emotional wave says, mm-hmm, use Goinger, so I'm going, but I was non-attached. And as you know, a neighbor knocked on my door and she went to someone else's house and brought me Clorox disinfectants. Someone who's in my life called me. This was all unexpected, unplanned. I didn't ask. He called me out of nowhere and said, oh, I found a painter's mask, a brand new painter's mask that I asked someone for for you. Like people are giving me and contributing. Why? zero attachment, right? Yes, zero attachment. And now you're being with yourself so they can be with you. That's what support is. C'è la luna mezzo mare. That's what I'm talking Absolutely. about. Absolutely. <laughs> Isn't this just the best freaking thing ever? <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Okay. This is huge. This is huge. This is big. Huge. Okay. Well, we're going to take a quick break. We have another question. We come back and we will get to that. Thank you for your patience, your passione right now. And I hope you're getting something a lot out of this conversation because frankly, it's for you. It's for me. It's for all of us at a really amazing time. We have such a beautiful person showing up, Sherry Anshar, and I'm already so grateful for this conversation. Folks, I'm Debbie Dashinger. I'm a media visibility shaman. And I help clients to express their unique roar. I just wrote that today. I love that. I'm going to say it again. I help you express your unique roar. I identify so much with lions. I have a um, Leo ascending, so that makes so much sense. I am a certified coach. I offer groups as well as individual sessions. I help you write a page turner book. I have a company that guarantees your book goes to international bestseller, and I show you how to be interviewed on radio and podcasts and get results and get booked today. This, folks, is a time when you're locked inside and you're not sure how to get yourself visibly out. Books, bestsellers, interviews, ta-da. This is your time. I am telling you, capitalize. Go to debbie-singer.com. I am happy to help you. And if you would like to write a chapter in an anthology book, go to debbied.net slash anthology, and you can write a chapter about a dog or a puppy. Welcome back. I am speaking with Sherry Anshara. She's at sherryanshara.com, and she is a medical and business intuitive. And bringing back the beautiful Sherry. Sherry, we've got a question. And this one is from Corinne. 
I'm going to spell her name. I don't know if this means anything, but I like spellings. C-O-R-I-N, Corinne. She says, my question is, what should be my focus for the next phase of my business? So this is a business intuitive question. What should be the focus for the next phase of Corinne's business? I feel discombobulated like so many entrepreneurs right now. Any insights or clarity would be awesome and helpful. Okay, this is what I'll say. First, you have to stay in the moment. Stop projecting into a future that hasn't been created yet. And this is what I teach to business people. So let's say you set an objective by November 12th. I'm just making this up. By November 12th, this is what my goal, my accomplishment, my, my vision is, my dream to make it real. So we already know we have set a date. Now stay in the moment because here is how it works when we throw our energy in the future. So tomorrow morning from nine to noon, I'm going to sleep in. I'm going to work with clients. I'm going to go to a movie. I'm going to watch a movie. I'm going to go for a walk. I'm going to have breakfast. I'm going to meet some friends. I'm going to make phone calls. How many futures did I just create for tomorrow morning from nine to noon? It hasn't happened yet. Nine to noon has not happened yet. I do have a vision. So I teach people in business as an entrepreneur. I've been that all my life. Even in the corporate world, I was an entrepreneur. So we've got to stay in the moment. Stay out of the outcome. So the income or the results come in that you create. Say that again. So Say that again. It was good. Say it. This is big. This is big. Stay out of the outcome so the income and the results can be achieved. When we are always in the outcome, we're taking our body, which is here, wherever you are in the world, and you're projecting into a future that hasn't happened. So this is an example. No one knew that we would have this coronavirus and we'd all be stuck in, right? Nobody, that you couldn't go out or do anything, whatever. So when you are not in an anxiety about our business, anxiety, the core emotional, is unrealistic expectations. So if we're in unrealistic expectations that it's November 15th or whatever it is, and we're not in the moment, then we can't move to that time frame and do what we require to do every day to make it happen. We are grounded. Then we are on purpose with our purposes because you have many, but you get grounded and you're not floating around and your head doesn't explode. You are actually utilizing your whole intelligence and intellect in your body. Your body is like a business plan. It knows what to do. It, it, the business plan. You eat something, it knows to take the nutrients and dump the rest. So what you've got to do is dump all that stuff that doesn't make sense to you. Stay in the moment, stay out of the outcome so the income results happen. So you have a projection, and that's good because it might happen November 10th instead of November 16th. But in the moment, you start doing your strategic plan. It's the same when I'm assisting people to heal themselves that we have, it, it, this is the best one, write this down. All of you write this down. Write down the word time, T-I-M-E. Okay. And what does it spell? Tie me. This is tie me. I've got too much time, too little time, time's running out, where did the time go? That's bullshit, I'm saying it like it is. Write this down, everybody, time is an increment of space. This is a space-time continuum. Debbie, you and I and everybody were in this space. So time is an increment of space in which to have an experience. So when you know that you're in that increment, so like I knew today that we would be talking at three o'clock. I was delighted, I, I was excited. But when I was working with clients today, or uh, I was on a, a conference call, or whatever I was doing, Though I knew that at three o'clock or November 12th, that you and I would have this wonderful chat, but I was actually in my increments each step of the way so that I wasn't, so I would be fully present and grounded 
in what I was doing in the moment. Hmm. So that when we talked, I did not over expel energy and bring my energy. Because people say, how come you, you know, you, yes, I get tired. Of course I do. But I'm not overextending because I'm in the moment. So time is an increment of space. So if you're an entrepreneur, it's okay to make your projections, but now you've got to do in this increment, what will I do to make this next increment of space and this have it come together? It's got to make sense. Let me ask another question. I just, so I just feel it like for Corinne. So, you know, I'm a clairsentient, a claircognizant. So when I, I, I'm jamming on this one, but it was a beautiful answer and she's definitely responding. Thank you. She's getting so much out of it, being in the moment, letting go of the outcome, all of that. So on her behalf, I want to ask what she is doing right now, business wise. Like I could feel a crossroads even here. Yes. Is this what she is? Okay. Forget the word meant. Nothing is meant. We're a free choice, but her soul is here for great purpose and obviously very gifted like all of us. Is she on the path right now doing what is hers to do? Or is she truly at a crossroads where it's time to make a left or a right? If so, can you give us a little intuitive? Yes. There? Okay. So see my fingers? That's the fork in the road. If we stay in that, if we stay in that paradigm, we're going to get forked again. Got it? <laughs> But if we're willing to go off into another direction and not be so closed about what it is that how it's supposed to happen, does that make sense? Say because more. Because then you're clear. Okay. Because now I'm so feeling it here in my space too. Yes. Because if we keep doing the same thing over and over again, that doesn't work. So we get afraid of change. Change is growth. Change is experience. So I had this lady come to me. You're going to love this. Debbie. So she's this corporate woman, dynamic, and she walks in and she looks at me and she says, I never changed. So, so I'm going like, what the hell are you doing here? You know, because I came highly recommended. Recommended for what? <laughs> so I looked at her and I said, so let me get this straight. You have always been this way. Yes. So I said, okay, then my dear, I'm much more impressed with your mother's JJ Because if you came out with that high heels, that, that suit, and that hairstyle, your mother's JJ rocks. So you're somewhere between the diapers and the pins. Under where do you think you haven't changed? <laughs> Isn't that the best? Oh. And your arms came, and she burst out laughing. She goes, that was stupid. I said, I know, it was fabulously stupid. So then she was able to connect to herself because this was a defense mechanism. And so sometimes <laughs> we try and try and try to convince ourselves about something when it's not, not working. It could mm. be a relationship. We will attempt to convince ourselves through the computer brain that we have to struggle and that it has to be hard. Mm. And if it isn't hard, there's no value. Crap. I can only think of one thing that's hard that's good. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> now, this I is my conversation, any, girl. Okay. I don't, you know, I don't want to make anything else hard. It's too ridiculous. It's, you know, it's, we, so we, you brought, brought up soul and spirit. The reason we have our bodies physical is so our soul and spirit can, can experience this dimension in the way we do but you have to make a choice instead of a decision hers was i'm deciding i'm like this but the choice was and when when i said that about her mother's with jj i'm not kidding you, she just burst out laughing so we are somewhere between under, under you know, diapers and depends so underwear we change a change is growth it's not pain so here as it's an intuitive pain in the body is the body's attempt to get our attention. If it's in the hip, it has to do with the creative chakra. If it's in the shoulders, it's too much responsibility. If it's in the throat, it says we can't speak our truth. If it's on our jaws, it's our hips because we can't speak our truth. So pain in the body is the body or the, or the head. So I get this picture. If your head is buried up your first chakra, that is very painful. <laughs> and you're not standing straight. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, you're not. You're rather looped. Uh, okay, so I hear your message for Corinne then is, you know, change, don't be so ensconced in what was, be open and fluid to what is and is coming, and to have faith, some trust, you know, that all is coming and being that revealed. It's that it's here. And I, and I look at that, it's already complete. I'm just going through the actions mm. To, mm. To, to, to bring it into fruition, to bring it into physical. Oh, I like that. Isn't it? It's, yeah. I already see that complete. When I first started writing my first book, I didn't know shit about writing a book. I don't even know if I even know now, but I had a 286 computer. Well, this is I a 286. <laughs> I know, I know. And so I didn't know, but I just knew I had to get it out, wh whatever it was. And nobody, not even Louise Hay would publish my books. And this is way back when, because there was no category for consciousness. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about consciousness. They would pat me on the head, you know, take a pill or whatever. But you have to, Debbie, or, or this gal's name, I forgot her name. Um, Corinne. Corinne you, Corinne, you have to trust your own guidance, which is your heart. Mm. Trust it. And sometimes we take little diversions. It's okay because those diversions, mm -hmm. I'm going to give you a funny example. Years ago, I thought I would like to go on a road trip. This is before we, we had anything, you know what I mean? I just, so Sherry, I just, can I ask you to hold your story for one quick momento and then we will come yes. back. Stay with us folks. Let me just, um, let me just get this going here and then we'll come back to Sherry's Sherry. Hold on to your story, please. I want to thank you for your brilliance. I am going to, um, give this quote from Deepak Chopra. Every time you're tempted to react in the same old way, ask if you want to be a prisoner of the past or a pioneer of the future. In the next weeks coming up, I have Brad and Casey Wallace coming on. They channel the energy, the wise energy known as Julius. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger. Remember the secret of success is having the courage to begin in the first place. And great, that will be our radio show. And now we're gonna go on because Sherry and I made a commitment before we started folks, that even though this is a radio show and a podcast show and I've gotta honor the time for radio, we also wanna honor you right now. And for those of you, and there's a lot of you who have showed up, it's cool because you're on the right show at the right time, right? Isn't it? Isn't life perfect? You're in the right place at the right time to hear the right message or have the right right? Belly laugh, either one. But we're, we welcome you here. So we're going to go a little longer than expected just to honor all of you and get everything in. And uh, so Sherry, please go ahead, finish your story. Okay. So we all take our paths. We're talking journey. So this is, I'm young and I like the idea of getting on a road trip. I love driving. So I thought I was going to drive somewhere and I didn't know. And so someone said, oh, you're so intuitive you know, and you fo follow the signs. I said, I did. It said Chicago this way and St. Louis that way. I followed the signs. So sometimes the signs are evident, but we don't allow ourselves to see them. Isn't that funny? So I didn't have a map. I went on a drive without a map. And that's when they said, oh, you're intuitive. I followed the signs. It was called the road signs. Go this way or go that way. So are you saying the universe is always giving us God, God as angels, whatever you want to fill in the blank doorknob, but it's always showing us if we'll drive, if we'll get in the car of our life as the driver, start the engine, put on the gas and go down the road, hopefully in a straightish line, that a sign will appear to say, exit this way. If we go to the exit, another sign will say off to the left or up the mountain, et cetera. That's correct. Follow your heart. That is how, see, I, I don't, I don't mind having a lesson, but I don't want to keep re-lessening the same crap. Oh. I would just like to the experience. I'm in it as the experiencer. I love to experience whatever it is. And that doesn't mean you have to stay stuck in it. Mm. You don't have to. And I'm going to give you one more story. When I would turn 30, I said to my mother and sister, who's 12 years older than me, she's my real mom, though she didn't birth me. And my mother was my formal mother. And I was going to take flying lessons. And they said, well, you're too old and you're a girl. Well, not only did I take flying lessons, I bought an airplane. And then I ended up producing air shows and volunteering and talking at the Pentagon. I did not know. 
But this is what I say to people. If I had listened to their belief system mm. so without judging them, I would have missed all that. But mm. I wouldn't have known I missed it. Mm. Don't miss. Mm. You can't miss unless you're not aware of what it is where you are in the moment. Oh, my goodness. You know, I'm feeling some of that energy that Corinne wrote in about. Um, and I've been feeling it for a long time. And then I got a call last year. You know, look, I do media. I help people with books. I help them with being interviewed. I do the same. I love this arena. And this is an end. I got this calling last year. Shaman, priestess, healer. Right? And I, well, could you give me a little more information? What does that look like? Where do I start? But you know, that's the way it was. So I signed up for classes most of which, by the way, have all been rescheduled or canceled because they literally started now while we're quarantined. And so I thought, well, what's next? I mean, I could sit like a lump or I can make good use if, if, you know, the universe is giving me that information. I trust source, right? So I started Visible Visionaries. That is a Facebook group. I've been there posting videos. I've been connecting with people. I don't know what's coming through. If I'm doing it right, if I'm not, it doesn't matter. I mean, I, I believe I'm being received. I think that's good enough. And so, and you guys can go there. It's an open, it's a private page and you'll be okay to come because if you're coming, I know you're right to be there. But join me there because this is a time when I'm really giving a voice to people who are here to be visible at a time when we're needed. So I'm also in my way stepping up. Yes. I don't know the next step. I don't know where the, the off ramp is yet. I don't even know if I'm on the, the freeway to tell yes. you the truth, right? You are though, but what you're doing is giving a, a platform for people to connect, to mm. give them the opportunity to speak their truth from their heart mm. instead of the true, true, true BS from their head. So just allow that to happen. You know, I never thought if someone told me, you know, when I was in the corporate world, I would be doing this i go are you people crazy are you nuts and and that you know what got me on that path was my third near-death experience when i had a broken neck a broken back a smash chain the brain out of place we didn't even know my brain was out of place and debbie i lost everything i mean i had a beautiful home i had been sued for alimony i mean how about that for a, a gal and yet when i showed up in arizona in 97 i i was down to my last 50 bucks and didn't know anybody wow. but i had a vision Mm. And so in that period of time from 91 to 97, when I moved that six year, and I lost everything. And honestly, I was homeless, but I did it perfectly. I moved in this one lady's house and we've been friends ever since. That was gorgeous. And, and I got to not work for a year with no income and was taken care of mm -hmm. and, and, and became besties and we're still friends. Mm -hmm. and, and, and who would know? And she came out of the blue when it's out of the blue, it's source. When it's out of the blue, it's that turning point. And it was the best thing that ever happened out of what people thought was loss was the best gain. Mm. That's and so, so you have, yeah, you have to trust. So I'm in Michigan. I've lost everything, you know, been VP of marketing, a national company without a college degree and all that crap, businesses, success, you know, got divorced, sued for alimony, built, I not built, I bought this home, four levels on an acre of land with a pool. And I'm on an, a um, 15 year mortgage to pay it off. I was into five years of it. Who did that in the eighties? I didn't know you couldn't do it. So now everything goes away. And I'm going to tell this to your audience, trust yourself. So these people started coming to me and this is, and they said, teach us something. I go, you must be the most stupid humans I've ever met. My life has fallen apart. That was my like life. Went stupid crazy. humans. You and doing? I'm going, and you're asking me to teach you something? Obviously, you're all stupid. <laughs> and so I said, all right. And there were eight women and two only knew each other. I don't even know how they found me. So here I am at my friend's house in her house teaching. And I said, I'll teach you something for eight weeks. I didn't know what I was teaching, but it was the, it was the information I was downloading from this first book. It lasted 13 months and they paid me. I'm going, oh my God, they're paying me. And, and so it, it changed their lives in mine. And then I moved and I got a job 
And then I ended up moving to Arizona, quitting job after I'm back in the corporate world going, hooray for Hollywood. I'm back in the game and I know it. And then, you know, six months later, I get this message, you're moving to Arizona. I said, send me to New York. I don't get the sand and, you know, tarantulas. What the hell? I, I get, you know, cement. And then I moved and followed my heart. And it was the best thing. Absolutely mm -hmm. best. So that's what I trusted. So when says, what roadmap do I follow? Yeah. The one in my heart. Follow your map in your heart. And your heart won't let you down, but your computer brain will. You know, I want to talk a little bit about the body. So you healed yourself like you were broken, 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 and you completely healed in a miracle because you had doctors going surgery and really extenuating circumstances and your inner guidance said, eh, not going to happen. Not and I'm choosing differently and you literally self healed. So um, I'm curious. Uh, okay. I don't know if, there, if there's a download for this, but is autoimmune disorder, especially the, the kind, the mysterious kind, right? <laughs> we don't know where it came from and we don't know how to solve it. I love mysteries like that, Perry Mason. So what do you get as a medical intuitive about autoimmune disorders like that? Okay, number one, your immunity is, is suppressed because of the belief systems. But have we ever heard the word autopilot? where we're on autopilot every day, we're not connected. That is why it's called autoimmune deficiency. Because Are you saying disconnected from the body or from our being? Yes, disconnected from ourselves. Mm -hmm. And we get on an autopilot of, of the tragedy of the victim and we're victimizing ourselves. That's what autoimmune system is emotionally. We are so disconnected from ourselves we're on autopilot, it affects, affects, it infects the immune system, it lowers the resonance, and then we get sick, and they can't identify what it is when it's all emotional to begin with. Wow, okay. Wow. Thank you very much. That was a really good, uncomfortable answer. <laughs> <laughs> It's, so the the, it's the comfort of the discomfort zone. <laughs> exactly. Lord Jesus. So connect with thyself and stop and go from victim to victorious. I've just been doing some emotional freedom technique, uh, EFT tapping around that very subject. Um, going it, moving into victorious, creating self standards, self values, what it means to be a woman, like a lot of stuff around that, but a, at a high level. I'm actually moving into because some of which I have some energetic feel and resonance with, and some of which is a big, incredible exploration right now. Yes. This is my tapping. Buddha. <laughs> <laughs> Buddha. I just hit my third eye. Buddha. I got it. I should have had a V8. <laughs> so humor is the best medicine. It's so good. So Sherry, I, I know you have some connection with this, but people who feel like they were a black sheep in their family, bah, very bad. How does this occur? What do you- It does. It, it, like, I was the black sheep and love it. Because, as a matter of fact, when I do write my own book about it, it's going to be called, I can't make this shit up. But the first line in the book is going to be, my mother, Sherry, where did you come from? <laughs> that, that's the first line. And that'll give you the whole picture. Where did you come from? So we just have different views that don't fit in those boxes. Mm -hmm. We don't. And, and so, and I know that a lot of, of the black sheep question a lot of stuff. Keep questioning mm -hmm. because the more you question, the more you'll get answers because we've been taught you have to accept that that's just the way it is. My second book that was called, and the point is beyond duality, the reason, the and the point is came from my mother, because she would say something, this is how life has been. And I said, well, then how come we have a car, not a horse and buggy and an ox and cart and got into trouble? Because I had the, you know, how could I question it? So that is the idea of it, is question, don't just accept something at face value, because what is the value if we don't, can't put a face on it, or something that's a connection to us.
Right, if there's no reference point, no understanding. I've been in that situation where I walked away and said, why didn't you ask more questions? That was weird, man. You don't un even understand what that person was saying or what that meant or, yes, ask questions, 100%. And little kids, and little kids are stopped. I remember being in school. I raised my hand and said, well, if Columbus discovered America, how come people lived here? This was the answer. The teacher gave me the best advice. You know what he told me? Just memorize it and pass the test. And inside, I didn't know the F word. And I thought, well, I'm not going to learn an effing ducking thing in here. Memorize it and pass the test. And I actually became a researcher back then, but I didn't know it. And then we had a thing called the library. What do you mean? There's, what do you mean memorize it and pass the test? That's what duality is. It's nothing but a bunch of BS that we've been memorized. Cellular memorization. And so when you are the black sheep, that's the biggest light in the family. You know, I have a little bit of connection with that. I'm not sure that I felt like a black sheep, maybe a little bit, but I, but I will say that I felt like, you know, looking back, I didn't know it at the time. I had no idea. But now as an adult, I look back and say, I came out full of joy. Like, I think I was 100% certified joy in a really dark home, like a really uh, negative, dark family, meaning my home that I grew up in. And that was really, that was very disturbing, I think, to have come out indigenously one way, but feel very oppressed by what was around me and then not know how to process that. And I think there was a lot of self-blame and self-flagellation, like that disconnect. It is. And that's what happens. We've been taught to disconnect instead of detach. Go back mm. to Neo. So I detach, but it doesn't mean I'm not connected. But when you disconnect, you're not there. You get disconnected, go along, go along, go along. And then something fires outside and we get back into that uh, non-productive connection again. And then it's, oh my God, here we go again. The ax fell. So when you detach, you're observing, do I really choose to participate in this or not? Then you have a choice instead of an emotional decision. The emotional decision are based on the belief systems that you have to. No, you don't have to at all. But mm -hmm. the choices, decisions is why we get stuck from the past. But a choice is you can choose it and then you can choose something else. You know, I always tell people, well, I can't change a decision. Yes, you can. Do you, do you decide to wear your, your same underwear every day for 20 years? <laughs> no, you change it. And so that like change is growth. Sherry, Fabulous. I want people to experience. So I've had the experience of you doing this. So we, can we take what I just said? Wow, I just had like three things come up for me all at once that we could do this with. So I'm going to leave it up to you. But you know how you take someone through a, like a new proclamation mm -hmm. so they can clear out the energy and bring in the new energy. I'm wondering if you will do that with me for others to have that experience with you. And yes. specifically, so it just like, whoa, that was an interesting, um, we started out talking about black sheep and not fitting in, but then it also, I also got a component of pleasing in the yes. Right, being a people pleaser because better. So I know you get it. Um, so will you take me through? Because everybody, I believe, will really benefit from this gift of yours. That would be good because at 4:30 I've got a conference call. But here, this is what I teach, and I even hand it out in my classes or to my clients. So this is what I would say, and and they would repeat it after me because their body listens. It's knowing at my deepest knowing, I cannot change the past it is unchangeable but what i can do is release the past where it no longer serves me from my cellular memory forgiveness simply means for me to give myself the opportunity as the observer only no I hope somebody will write that down about forgiveness yeah. Yeah, you know, instead, see, the way we taught forgiveness is that we still are victim. I will forgive you, but I don't forget. This actually clears it out. So forgiveness simply means for me to give myself the opportunity or opportunities 
as the observer only, no longer a participant, to go back when I'm working with them, whatever age or stage came up, and to see that both my parents or siblings or perpetrator were more afraid than me. And they had absolutely no idea who I am. Mm. And I did not have the words or the language or the experience or the knowledge or the vocabulary to tell them. And they couldn't listen to me. They could not. And no one told me about the contract. So mm. in this moment of this now, in this very moment, I'm canceling the contract of not being good enough or being the black sheep or trying and trying to fix people or being a pleaser. Those contracts don't work for me anymore. I'm canceling them. It doesn't mean I'm canceling people out of my life, though I can, but I'm getting rid of that profile and freeing myself. I am the only one that can validate me. And for those outside of me that validate me, I thank them. And for those that don't, oh, well, oh, well. And at that age that comes up, I say, I thank my seven-year-old or fetus or whatever uh, for coming to the surface to free me so I can grow. Everybody, let go of growing up. Growing up is freaking boring. Grow. Grow in all directions. Hmm. I'm not I don't know what growing up is. And they call it about adulthood. It's a hood we put over ourselves. And then they take childhood and put another hood over. Like, shut up. <laughs> You're hilarious. <laughs> so, Sherry, I'm getting you out of here on time. In our last four minutes together, this is Dare to Dream. What are you next, Dare to Dream? What are your future dreams and goals? For me? Yes, my or daughter. For or for me, you can create goals for me. I'll take it. <laughs> I may not love them. I may not accept them. But no, what are okay. your goals? The word goal means go for all. Mm -hmm. I like Isn't it. it. Yeah. Go for all. And intention means this is what you intend at your ion or cellular level. So make sure that your intentions and that your goals are compatible. And time is an increment of space in which to have an experience. And so begin to write it down. You don't have to journal or don't make it difficult. But if a thought comes to you, I do that all day long. I can be working with the client and a thought will come up. I'll write it down. And the next thing you know, I have my next article. Mm. Trust your intuition. It is your innate ability to discern. That's all it is. What are the ways that people can work with you? Well, I work with them over the phone and over Zoom, and I work in person. But 20% of my clients, it's getting 25% now, I've never met them. I work with them over the phone, but because they have this ability to bilocate or connect, we just have fabulous results. So I love it. I've had clients get rid of stage four cancer when they were told they had two months to live. And I go, that's just somebody else's BS. We're not wrong in the doctors because they're going from what they think they know, but we're going what we know, what we feel. And so I love working with clients over the phone. It is like the coolest. I have packages. Um, actually, last Saturday, I had a gal come and for a VIP, half a VIP day. A week ago, I had somebody come for a full day. And then the following, the week before that, I had a couple come in and they flew in and I worked four days with them. Oh my God, it was fabulous. <laughs> was that personal or business that you worked with them on or both? Both. So that way we don't separate ourselves. Make sense? Yes. Hey, man, I love you so much. I thank you so much for coming on today. You're the bomb.com. You are. And the best part about meeting you, Debbie, is I was at a conference that I wasn't supposed to go to. I didn't know you weren't supposed to be there. Were you supporting? Because a lot of clients came up to me and talked to me about you before I even really? met you. Oh, she, Sherry changed my life. I'm like, who is this woman? Right? <laughs> so were you there supporting them? No, I, I went for myself, but I, it like it was like it was a last minute thing. And I was sorry I couldn't go to the last one, but I already had had things done. But I thought, you know what? My intuition told me to go. And that's, and I said, okay, I'm going to make it happen. But the last one, you know, this previous one, I couldn't, it just, it wouldn't work out, but I just made it happen. Isn't that hilarious? Yeah. Like we're supposed to meet though, right? Yes. And I'm so grateful. Just so grateful.
Me too. I'm full of gratitude for you too and appreciation. And thank you for delivering such a beautiful show today, my friend. You rock and you are hilarious as always. For those who didn't get to hear this entire thing or watch this entire video, you must go back because you'll pee in your pants at half the things that Sherry says. <laughs> And uh, as a reminder, her website is Sherry Anshara. What a gorgeous name, Anshara.com. Go ahead and check her out. She offers a lot. You can tell how highly gifted she is. And as a reminder, I'm a media visibility shaman. I help you write a page turner book, take your book to a guaranteed international bestseller, and learn how to be interviewed on radio and podcast and get outstanding results. I help you create your unique roar out into the world. And if you would like to write a chapter in a dog anthology, a compilation, go to debbyd.net, D-E-B-B-I, D.net slash anthology and register there. Remember folks that the secret of success is having the courage to begin in the first place. Thanks for joining us today on Dare to Dream.